Hey friends, welcome back to the homestead. Welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to show you how to install this Happy Hen House Chick A automatic chicken door opener. Stick with us and see how it's done. After we do the install, we're then going to show you how to program it and we're going to talk about why we chose this particular one. If you're interested in more videos like this about homesteading, self-sufficiency, and some DIY projects, head below, hit that subscribe button, and stay with us here on a permanent basis. All right, let's get back to installing that door. Okay, let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, we have our control unit right here. We've also got our power cord, the chicken door itself, this is actually a nice heavy gauge, uh, I like this is steel. We've got our actuator right here, our linear actuator. We've got the mounting brackets for the actuator and the door. We've got our mounting hardware for our guide rails, which are here in the box as well. And something really cool, we have got our uh, light sensor here that plugs in. And you can use this unit to either look and sense your, uh, the daylight outside with this sensor, or you can program it on the timer to open and close when you want it to open and close. And that is one of the reasons why we chose this. It gave us a range of options on what we wanted. Additionally, the reason we chose it is for this linear actuator. Now, these chicken doors with the linear actuators are a little bit more expensive, but I think that it is this, the weight on this is fantastic. I think they uh, will last longer. These actuators um, are more heavy duty. Some of the other chicken doors have a small device in here which has a string on it. It comes out the bottom and it winds up and it pulls the door up and down with this little piece of string. I absolutely was not comfortable with that. Maybe you've used them, maybe they work just fine, but pulling up this heavy door over and over and over again with this uh, little mechanism in here with more than likely plastic gears, I didn't think it was going to last very long at all. And that is the reason why we spent a few more dollars and we got this one. So here are the tools you're going to need to complete the project. A drill driver, a screwdriver, some sort of uh, measuring implements, something to write with of course, and some sort of saw and we're going to opt for the uh, drill and jigsaw method. You could use a circular saw, it doesn't really matter. Whatever it takes to cut the hole in the side of the coop. So we chose a model that has a regular AC power source and that's not a problem for us. If you saw our chicken coop design uh, tour and video, we uh, built it within uh, or right next to our barn or within the stable. So that's not a, power, a problem with us. We didn't want to spring for the solar powered one. Not a problem. All right, so I want you to understand that you're going to need these one of these little DL2032 batteries to for the memory. So if your power does go out, then your settings are, are uh, held with this with this battery. I don't know how long it'll last, but these usually last a little lo uh, long time on these little circuit boards. So make sure you've got one of these little batteries handy. The instructions are to draw a nine inch wide by eleven inch tall. Uh, oh, rectangular opening and cut that out. What we are going to do is go inside the coop and drill from the inside, draw our rectangle, drill from the inside, and then come out here and use the jigsaw to cut out the hole. So we measured it out on the inside, got our holes drilled, and I'm going to connect them on the exterior as well so we can follow along properly with that jigsaw. Once we get them marked out, cut it out. The next step is to mount the bracket to the door, and we're going to do that with the provided hardware. We forgot to mention at the beginning that you're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench to do so. Next step is to install the rails. So these rails are shaped like an eye, and you can see the holes drilled in them are on one side of that central portion of it. You're going to want that on the outside of your door. So we're going to take that and mount it like so. There's also another tool I'd recommend for this project, and that is a level. Why? Because if these rails aren't straight up and down or plumb, then that's going to cause issues for the door. So I'd recommend having a level for this project as well. 
So it doesn't say specifically in the instructions, but this rail looks like it's mounted about an inch and a half below the opening of the door. And I think that is to provide the door to come out or come closed over the top of the exterior of the siding here so that no creature can push on it or get its claws on it and kind of push it up. Although that actuator is really tough, I don't think it's going to allow anything to push it up. I think that's a safety uh, feature that it has there. So we're going to mount these an inch and a half below the opening. So the bottom of the rail an inch and a half below the opening. So we're going to check for level and then mark it because I'm not sure my jigsaw job was good enough on the side here. So I can't take the opening as being uh, true. So we're going to use that level and make sure that it is straight up and down. So for the second rail, we're going to insert the door, make sure she slides properly, and then put our rail on here and mark it off so that we know that this door fits properly inside our rails. Once your rails are on, you want to measure nine inches above the top of the rails so that you can place the actuator. So the actuator will be from the bottom of the rails all the way to that marked line, nine inches above the top, 32 and a half inches. So this is the bracket that you will mount up at that nine inch line. The nine inch line will come right here to the top of the bracket and this slope will be pointed down and that's so you can attach the actuator via a pin right at this point. We're going to draw a line actually from the inside of our rails all the way up to that nine inch line. And why are we going to do that? Well, we are doing that so we can center that actuator bracket right dead center, right at the top of our uh, nine inch line up here at the top so that we have perfect alignment for the actuator to seat into that bracket that we already put on the door. Once you have that bracket installed, install the provided pin for the top here. And then it comes with a little, I call them cotter pins, that's where I came from, this little pin to lock it in. From there, we can take our door from the bottom side here and bring it up to meet the actuator arm. Now comes to the next step, mounting our control box. Now the instructions say to mount it on the inside of the coop, but we're going to mount it on the outside of the coop. We're here inside of our stable, which is where we built our uh, chicken coop. So we don't have to worry about any water entrance. And this thing looks uh, waterproof anyway. So I think you can pretty much mount it wherever you want. Now we're going to mount it on the side, the back side of our coop here. And the reason for that is the light sensor I need to be able to utilize this opening here, which is for the ventilation for the chicken coop. Uh, we went over that in the chicken coop build video. We're going to utilize that opening for our light sensor. And we're not going to do this on a timer. We're going to do it by the sunlight. The instructions do say that you can utilize these, these holes on the ends to put a screw through to mount it. I want you to be really careful because if you mess up the threads on the inside for these plastic hold down uh, screws for the top, you're going to have a problem because you're not going to be able to secure the top. So be very, very careful when putting a screw through that and into uh, wherever you're going to mount it. Another reason for mounting it on this side is simply because our power source, it's closer to our power source and this actuator cord is nice and long. So it's perfect for us you're going to have to determine where you want to mount yours. There's probably a million different combinations. Okay, let's go through the settings. We've got our time. That's the first one here. So we're going to push it. It's for our time and then we're going to move it up and down to set our time and I believe it is in military time. Yes, it is. So it's a 24 hour clock. So we're going to set it for it's 521 right now. 
two, three, four, five. Oops. We're going to cycle through it. There we go. We're going up. It's pretty easy. The instructions are actually very clear on this portion. So now we've got our time set. We're going to move to the next uh, position here, which is our open and close time. So we got our open time here, and as soon as we hit it again, we can set our open time. We're going to skip past that because we are going to utilize the light sensor. So I'm going to skip through that, and now we come to the open lumen, OL, open lumen, and it's set at 15. It uh, says it's a good level to start at, 15 or 16, so I'm going to leave it there and see how it operates. The next, our close time, and we're going to skip through our close time. So we're going to cycle through that. We're going to get to our closed lumens. And the lumens on the instructions say that uh, you really need to test it a night before you can really rely on it to protect the chickens and close it. So we're going to put it at 6 and see how that works. Next, we're going to go to our control. And we're set at 3, which is for light open light close and that's exactly what we want so if we don't want that we can set it at two on the instructions which is light open time close and so on one is time open light close and zero is time open time close so we're going to set it on setting three light open light close next one is the current lumens so the current lumens it's pulling at and of course that's uh, in front of my camera and lighting, so that's not going to be accurate. We're going to turn that off and, and set it once I'm done filming. So we're going to set that, the current lumens, we're going to skip past that right now. Now we're at the protection level, which is the force. That's another reason why I love this door, is that it won't close and hurt your chickens. So it measures force on that actuator and it won't smash your chickens. So the protect here says that uh, the lower number, the better. So we're, we're at a three, and it says recommended to start at a five. So we'll go to five. Okay, I feel more comfortable with four. So let's do four. Next time, and next one is number eleven, which is the uh, time again, which means you can set the time of day. No, nope, I don't want to do that, and I'm going to close out and it says done. That is all you need to do. It's very, very simple to program this. I really, really like the programming features on this, uh, this unit. It's really nice. So there you go. It's pretty easy to install and program and you saw both of those. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about why I purchased it in all those features I did mention throughout the video. So uh, one, it's got that light sensor. Two, it, uh, it is easy to program and three, it had that uh, nice, strong actuator arm for opening and closing the door. And four, it's got that force uh, meter on there. So it measures the force so it's not going to smash your chicken. Now, a lot of those string type ones aren't going to smash your chicken at all. <laughs> uh, but you need that feature on the ones with this uh, actuator arm on it. So something I'm a little worried about is you saw when the door was opening and closing, in the demonstration that it slowed down and it slowed down because the back of the screws that are holding this bracket on are hitting my siding and I think that might put some undue pressure on the actuator I'm not sure I'm not sure how great of an actuator this is or if it will wear it out quicker over time so that's something that I'm a little worried about I might kind of like carve out a groove here for those screws to ride up and down inside of and that will alleviate the problem. So I think I'm going to do that anyway, just to save uh, the actuator from any really harsh opening and closing. Now I want you to go right here and check out this video, which shows you how we built our chicken run. Also, head below, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and stay with us here permanently. Have a great day.